C, D, E, F, G. Now we're on to horror with Nicolas Cage and we're starting with Vampire's Kiss, which might be my favorite watch and movie to talk about because it might be his best so far. Crazy or like, I guess, crazy ass Nicolas Cage. I thought that was like mid 2000s. I thought it started with Wicker Man and maybe movies earlier in the year, maybe late 90s, but I didn't expect it to be this early in his career. I believe 1988 for him to kind of act over the top. while like he is yelling and screaming and doing some wacky shit in this movie and it's all great. Especially Especially that meme or I don't know where I saw it but the whole ABCD to his therapist which that within itself is questionable whether that's real or not because he was supposedly bitten by a vampire but I think the movie is trying to tell us like was he really bitten by a vampire or is he just mentally ill or just kind of insane and uses that as an excuse to assault his assistants and so that part was interesting while at the same time having cage doing his cage stuff and essentially just being on the streets again looking all crappy or whatnot he's already pushing people away even before I think the vampire girlfriend i think he decides to just kind of leave her before he gets with that vampire chick and then a second time leaves her again the assistant he kind of not treated her badly but just kind of used her as an accessory instead of actually treating her like a person with a job and so him supposedly getting bitten by a vampire causes even more issues because the assistant is a very shy timid person she's not really confident at all and so she's bound to be taken advantage of by cage even down to the whole therapy sessions with his therapist to me that always felt real until the very end where he's talking to himself on the streets with like this wood board thing and turns out it was fake i don't i don't think it was until the very end until he was bitten he stopped seeing her and i never once thought that all of this was not real i thought he was actually really bitten by a vampire and so he's just you know just changing and whatnot or maybe just using that as an excuse to do all of these bad things and have this bad behavior but then in the end the assistant's brother comes in clearly sees that he's all messed up but still wants to kill him because of what happened and he does with his own wooden stick getting impaled or staked like a vampire in his house dying and that's how the movie ends if he would have lived on that probably would have been unsatisfying and especially setting up that assault stuff coming back all around to the end getting what he deserves so vampire's kiss so far it's my favorite Wicker Man is another movie that I know because of the infamous memes and just my eyes and how did it burn and all that stuff. And so I knew a lot of it going into it. The movie itself is fine. But again, what makes it so enjoyable is Nicolas Cage. The plot is, what is the plot? Like I haven't seen the original. I don't plan to honestly. This one, it is something else. Cage is like a detective or something, like an agent or something like that. He goes to his village. That is obviously creepy. Like there are just clear signs of get the fuck out of here and... He does not take any of them whatsoever. But he goes there, where shit happens. It's like this cult thing and memes starts happening. And yeah, that's really it. But why stay? Like the first thing that he sees when he gets to the island is a bloody bag that clearly has a dead person in it, like a dead body. And he's just like, okay. And, and he goes to check it, not all the way through, but then there's like a jump scare. And then he just walks off. It's like, what? If I see that shit, I'm getting out. There's just no way I'm staying there. Getting back on the fucking plane. Even those creepy ass old ladies, they're fucking creepy. Acting weird. It feels feels like a cultish mentality type situation and Cage is there being like how to burn how to burn in my eyes you know but I think the funniest part is him like realizing this and then he's like, you know what fuck it just starts fucking swinging putting these old ass ladies and then oh yeah there's like a car crash with his daughter I think his wife is a part of this cult and he's like hey go check out this island our girl's missing there's like flashback to this car crash which i don't really care about it comes back i guess but it's just felt like it was there to fill in time but all of that doesn't matter because nick cage is out here doing his best performance creating memes and it's great and then also because this is a remake in the 2000s i'm gonna assume that this is kind of a shot for shot remake of the original aside from the memes and whatnot like it's an actual reimagining of the original which does suck i don't really like that i do prefer remakes that are are completely different to have the same essence of the original like maniac still about a guy that's mentally ill and kind of crazy but the original is disgusting while in the remake it's gross but it's also from the point of view mostly from elijah wood and so stuff like that or even the friday the 13th remake this one i can't say for sure because again i haven't seen the original but i'm gonna assume that it's more serious played for you know not for laughs or creating memes obviously it's simple but I'm just gonna say this remake is obviously superior maybe i'm joking maybe halfway through but anyways Wicker Man, I enjoyed it. 
Now I wasn't going to put Grindhouse in this because it's two movies but also Cage himself is in the movie but in a fake trailer. Screw it, I'll put it in here. I'll include both movies, Planet Terror and Death Proof as one. But first the fake trailer that Cage is actually in, it's called Werewolf Woman of the SS and it's clearly directed by Rob Zombie because his wife is in it. Once I saw that I was like oh this is directed by Rob Zombie and I think also like Edgar Wright directed one. A bunch of different directors directing these fake trailers and I actually would have liked to have seen this one because Cage is playing Fu Manchu and it looks ridiculous and a lot of fun kind of up my alley but the only one that became like a film or a series was machete with danny trejo but based off of this trailer they're turning women into werewolves and it's like swastika and all that stuff what the hell's going on and but then one lady takes over and turns it Fu manchu cage comes in it's like what the hell's going on it's bombastic it's ridiculous i would have loved it and so that's cage that's it for the cage part but then the other trailers like don't that was pretty funny just don't watch this movie don't do anything don't there's hobo with a shotgun which i thought was pretty funny machete which i think i've seen the one scene i remember is uh him with a mom and a daughter that's all i'm gonna say i don't know why i watched i was like too young to watch it but and so when i saw this fake trailer i was like wait a minute i've seen that image i've seen that video i've seen that movie what the hell's going on i don't know what happened but i'll go back and watch it because it looks like ridiculous danny trejo fun he's just having a fun time doing some fun things and oh yeah thanksgiving there's a like a low budget thanksgiving actual like film about thanksgiving but this trailer it looks like fun dumb fun slasher fun as well and then the actual movie is death proof i've already seen it. i didn't watch death proof i kind of skimmed over it because i already watched it i like bench watched tarantino movies like a year ago something like that but it's a movie i still like i don't think it is it my least favorite tarantino movie i don't think it is i think once upon a time is my least favorite but death proof is a good movie because all of his movies tarantino's movies are good and well made and so even my least favorite it's still a good movie but from what i remember from death proof you've got Kurt russell i think he's like killing these ladies in his car driving them off really cool lamp dance kills that girl there's feet obviously feet rosie o'dawson is how you say her name she comes in and her group and her friends take out kurt russell and then i haven't seen planet terror at all watching it for the first time it's as good as death proof really cool practical effects because it was by greg nicotero but it's essentially like a zombie apocalypse movie but more stylized it's got this grain filter over it and more ridiculous because our main girl whose name i forgot about she loses her leg it gets cut off and she has like a gun on her leg and shooting zombies and shit killing it and i thought it was awesome josh brolin tell his wife the wife is i think from scream 4 the cop lady that loves dewey i think that's her but he's trying to kill her but he doesn't he gets spit on by this cool looking but disgusting you don't really care about some but then you like some like the girl with the machine gun and bruce willis and josh brolin there's gonna be some survivors she has his boyfriend he obviously dies she goes off save a bunch of people and then kills one last zombie with her cool looking leg and so it's a very like simple movie with a very stylized and very ridiculous edge to it pay the ghost was all right you got Lori from walking dead as cage's wife as both of them lose their son because cage forgot about him like a fair or a carnival or something like that that part of the movie is good seeing parents lose their own son trying to grieve over it trying to find ways to find him get him back that part was good the issue is everything else around it is like all right i don't know if it's just direction or the script but it was more they're lost than cage wants to find a way this mystery stuff and i don't know i just wasn't into it and it also plays it safe where they eventually find their son and it was very predictable which isn't bad but if i could watch a movie halfway through and think oh he's gonna find him there's gonna be you know some crazy mystery maybe horror stuff and i was kind of on that i was like oh okay and then there's other children involved that creepy ass room where there's just other kids he's able to find his son somehow get him out take him to lori and then happily ever after and so it ends off in a way that's expected but also very safe and then that's really it to the movie i mean there's good acting from again lord from walking dead and cage but that's really it he's going to other people those scenes of him going around felt like they were there they were needed but i also could have done without them and i guess Lori should have done more as well she's the grieving part which is fine but maybe help cage but you know it's whatever but it's an okay movie that's really it it's safe predictable fine it's not even really that scary aside from that one again all those children aside from that it's not really scary at all mom and dad so i've already talked about this movie back whenever i first did halloween stuff 31 days of horror stop doing that because it's too much but i included this on day 19 i think and i remember liking it Rewatching it i still pretty much like it the whole movie is kind of metaphor about parents loving their children but sometimes they just want to kill them not literally but in this movie it is that where somehow through mass hysteria parents are like i gotta kill my kids and it's horrifying because it's your parents you don't want to hurt them but they're also your parents 
isn't kind of crazy that they're wanting to kill you that aspect is creepy and kind of fun to watch you don't ever want to think that your parents who are there to you know love you and care for you are gonna one day be like you're annoying i love you i'm just gonna kill you all of the actors they're fine the daughter is like stealing money from the mom which is super fucked up like why would you steal for your mom stealing's bad but if you are gonna steal don't steal for your mom and then even her friends i guess it's kind of the problem with the script where she's yelling for her friend but then she's still looking around i think one of her friends put like her finger in a blender why would you do that but then finds her mom and it's like the daughter is still yelling and screaming but she doesn't hear her because horror movie i guess there's that creepy ass asian lady wiping on the floor with blood and just kind of casually doing it acting like this is a normal thing just killing her own kids and then of course there's family issues which is kind of the cause of this whole mass hysteria stuff stealing money being ungrateful being little shitheads and so this whole thing is just an excuse for parents and adults to be like all right i gotta do this and then we even get to see cage do the whole craziness things and yelling and crazy eyes and whatnot and then the way the movie ends is kind of i don't know how i felt by the ending but it's a cool way to end it it's not resolved i think the kids are about to kill the parents because they tie them up and then the movie ends with cage being like we love you but damn sometimes we just want to kill you and then it ends with mom and dad and so either they're gonna burn them alive or kill them or they solve it which i don't think they can no point at any time where in the movie the kids are like we have a solution it's more like we gotta survive our parents have gone crazy there's like kind of no character growth because she doesn't feel bad for stealing really the way the movie ends is kind of whatever but i still like the movie on rewatch i wanted to really like mandy because it sounded cool and awesome but i thought it was okay because the first half of this movie was a bit boring it was set up but a very long ass setup because we have to set up this whole cult people and cage's relationship with his wife and that could have been 10 even 20 minutes but even that feels like it's a bit too long and then once we get into the second half there's only bits and pieces that i really like like the whole chainsaw bit where cage has a chainsaw he's trying to start it but then this guy randomly has this even bigger and longer chainsaw it's like mine's bigger they have a chainsaw battle cage wins obviously and we even get more crazy cage of him like that end shot of him next to his wife burning the house behind him in his car and that image of him smiling and looking up that's the only thing i saw from this movie and it looked creepy as hell but again it's only bits and pieces so like he gets tortured which is fine and finally gets his revenge on all these people that killed his wife but it doesn't feel satisfying or good because aside from him yelling in his bathroom and killing and being all bloodied up i feel like there's nothing there barkus has that wicker man has that even mom and dad but for this one it feels like what's driving it is just him being crazy i guess my issue is with the plot it's not as interesting because it's a revenge flick essentially but i don't know maybe i just wanted a lot more like i wanted a lot more bloody shits swinging everywhere blood everywhere and there was that i guess i just wanted more and that sucks because i think this movie had everything that i wanted from nicholas cage didn't find myself enjoying it i mean i did enjoy it but overall though i don't think it's a good movie thought it was all right but like you'd have really trimmed down the whole first half get 10 minutes on you know the why this cult is there getting hornets and biting people whatever right that part is taken care of start setting up why he loves his wife once that happens revenge time and the movie was that but at a really long first hour he gets tortured comes back again starts killing maybe it just wasn't for me color out of space this movie feels a bit more old school where something happens in the beginning we establish our characters but then slowly but surely through tension and just build up as a satisfying conclusion and ends off in a very dark somber maybe not somber but very like oh shit okay i'm screwed goodbye kind of end we have cage and his family they're from the city and they want to get out of it and so they move to this really big land kind of farm kind of not land big area and once they get there they start being very comfortable a meter comes in and sinks into the fucking ground and that's when weird shit starts happening at first it's small it's maybe you know something went missing and the ground is being really weird but slowly but surely things start changing it starts getting creepy and kind of eerie of what's going on here it doesn't get revealed just yet and i really like that just kind of the slow burn and then eventually this thing meteor or whatever it is completely takes over it by the end of the movie leaving only ward the only survivor my favorite changes was obviously nicholas cage saying to his own daughter the fuck out of my face or some shit like that and you know it doesn't come out of nowhere i mean i guess it does but that's part of the changes the land the people around it the water and everything the color taking over and so cage doing that was just kind of like okay yeah this is uh is a damn good movie and it's obviously like cosmic type stuff which leads into it being alien a ship comes by throughout the whole movie you're like okay this it's obviously aliens but it's more cosmic and i think it's a book i think it's a lovecraft i might be wrong on that do i remember any of the characters names i don't think i do again i'm very bad with names but get the daughter 
who likes the ward. That's the only name I remember because he survives. Everyone else gets swallowed up. They get taken over and consumed by this cosmic color thing. Brother, the mom, like, like the family itself doesn't matter. I mean, I guess it does. Just seeing them change matters, you know? Just like weird erratic behaviors, telling her daughter to go fuck off, something like that. And then, oh yeah, there's like this weird old man in the woods that ward likes going to for prophecies or some shit. Could have done without that. It's a whatever, but sure. You need some sort of old creepy ass but wise man to be like the colors taken over it's from space color out of space and then eventually ward is the only survivor leaving him to only know about this story but i don't think he's gonna tell anyone because no one's gonna believe him family and town or city land got swallowed up by a cosmic thing the color and i actually would have preferred it if they didn't reveal what it was i mean they do but i actually would have preferred it if the movie just left it unknown something took over and you don't know and the final movie, Willy's Wonderland. I watched it when it came out in 2020 during the pandemic and rewatching it, I still think it's okay. Like Cage not speaking is both good, but also a lot of bad because just by looking, he's intimidating, which I do like. But the best part about Cage is him like talking and all that stuff. All the memes that you see is him just doing his shit. You know, it's like, why would you do that? It doesn't work for me for that reason alone. And then he does the whole thing on repeat of him drinking his beer, not beer, but soda or whatever energy drink playing an arcade game cleaning and repeat and then killing a robot from Five Nights at Freddy because this movie is clearly like homaging ripping off or just an idea from Five Nights at Freddy because these animatronics look like okay maybe not look like them but obviously it's like hey this is a version of Five Nights at Freddy if Cage was in the movie town and this politician or whatever it's like I'm gonna get people to work here and get them killed because it's a whole ritual stuff and then you have like high school characters or high school kids trying to break this cycle as well and some of them get killed killed he like befriends this girl but he doesn't talk to her only gives her by the end gives her this soda energy drink that's how they bond okay sure and that's the whole movie the kids they're fine some of them aren't that great but whatever they're kind of dumb kids cage doesn't speak so he just does the same stuff cleaning killing the actual kills are good i like them but why haven't speak i feel like that's my biggest issue of let cage do his thing and i don't know the script was like don't have this guy speak just by looking he's intimidating which which he is, but I think I just prefer him to speak. You have, you know, teenage characters that are typical teenage characters, but it's also kind of like Five Nights at Freddy. So this movie's weird. I do like it to an extent, but overall though, I still think it's okay. And that was it for Nicolas Cage's horror filmography. This might be my favorite watch and binge watch of movies because while you have, you know, Pay the Ghost, which is fine, Mandy and Willy, you also have Vampire's Kiss, Wicker Man, Color Outer Space, Grindhouse. Like this is a lot of fun to go through. And might be my favorite watch of any of these binges seen infamous memes come to life but that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching